The Leah Finishoff Fashion Show is a promotional event to showcase your talent and to help gain clientele and exposure. Our goal is to highlight like-minded entrepreneurs and give them the proper recognition that they deserve. This is a free promotional event for businesses. There is no vendor fee and it is not a free event. Our participants will be compensated through gifts and free promo on our here at Fashion Show directly in United States. More details will be explained further in your welcoming package once you are signed up and accepted to be a part of the fashion show. Please consider that positions are limited. This event will be documented by media outlets such as the Roku Channel, the Chicago Bridge Magazine, the Call Fraternity, by Hook Radio, and Apple Podcasts just to name a few. Thank you so much for your interest. We look forward to teaming with you. Hello, guys. I am Gracie Love. Happy Wednesday. Peace and blessings to you all. Welcome to the Chicago Bridge Magazine. Black history every day. Here we honor extraordinary people that are making history. And once again, I have an extraordinary guest for you guys. But I want to really quickly make sure that I shout out our sponsors, right? Because without the sponsors and the support of our community, right, it really wouldn't, we really wouldn't be able to grow and expand. So really want to shout out um, at the Real Pretty Plug. You guys can follow them on Instagram at The Real Pretty Plug. And they also have a fashion show that will be coming up. So vendors, uh, definitely make sure you get in, uh, follow at The Real Pretty Plug for the details for that. So you can register. You need to make sure that you register for that, okay? And also, uh, shout out to our sponsors, ENT Industry News. Uh, very, very special shout out to you guys. And again, thank you so much for your support. And again, we couldn't do it without the support of our sponsors of the community. So thank you again to the Real Pretty Plug and ENT Industry News. So, like I said when I first jumped on, I'm Gracie Love. And this is the Chicago Bridge Magazine, okay, where we honor extraordinary people. And I get the pleasure of doing that uh, this Wednesday and have been able to do that these past Wednesdays. And it has just been an absolute honor Um to be a part of such an amazing, amazing thing. So this Wednesday is no disappointment again at all. To have another very, very exciting, special guest um, that's going to be on. And this guest, you know, let me just uh, give a little bit of background before I spill the beads. Um, but this guest definitely something very special um, because when I found out I was going to be having the opportunity, um, uh, instantly thought about, um, prior conversation me and my mom had months and months ago, uh, after watching, uh, the Temptations movie, we had been doing a bit of research about each of the members and just where life had taken them, um, you know, after, uh, after being such a, uh, such a powerful force um, in Motown music. Um, and so doing a little bit of research, um, finding out about um, their kids and their lives. And so we found out that David Ruffin, uh, he had uh, um, some, he had children. And um, we found out a little bit of information about his son, David Ruffin Jr. And so today to have the honor to be able to conduct such an extraordinary interview with such an extraordinary person um, is absolutely amazing. And it just uh, reminds me that I am just where I'm supposed to be doing what I am supposed to be doing. And I just could not be more honored to be a part of that and be a part of this. So 
really want to shout out Miss Bridget Wiley for putting all of this together and being so extraordinary herself and allowing to have such a platform where we can honor such extraordinary people every day uh, and in so many different ways. So I hope you can watch it here with me on the podcast that you also um, can read about these extraordinary people in the magazine. So yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be here, um, to be able to have the opportunity to meet such extraordinary people. Uh, never would have thought little old Gracie would be up here doing all these big old things. So I'm just really, really grateful. I'm really, really fortunate and humbled to be able to bring you guys such incredible, extraordinary interviews and just amazing, amazing content and just be able to just connect and network with all the different extraordinary people. So you guys make sure that you're following the Chicago Bridge magazine. Um, Make sure that you guys follow me. Gracie Love on all social media platforms. You guys can follow follow me on Facebook, The Euphoria Hour, and then on Instagram, The underscore Euphoria underscore Hour. Um, Got an event coming up May 29th. It's going to be a karaoke night. I'm going to have artists come out performing. Going to have a couple vendors come out. It's going to be a lot of good fun, good time. Great way to, you know, really tie all together the Memorial Day weekend. So you guys, if you're in Vegas, if you're not, great reason to come out to Vegas, right? And come join me May 29th. Uh, again, follow me on Instagram and on Facebook. On Facebook, the Euphoria Hour and on Instagram, the underscore Euphoria underscore hour. So that way you can get the time and you can get uh, the location and all the extra details of how you can sign up if you like to be a vendor or if you would like to be an artist. So uh, you guys go ahead, make sure you uh, follow, follow, follow uh, the Chicago Bridge Magazine. Make sure you follow me, the Euphoria Hour on Facebook and then the underscore Euphoria underscore hour on Instagram. Make sure, like I said, you follow our sponsors um, at The Real Pretty Plug and ENT Industry News, you guys. Gotta show some love to them just like they show some love to us all the time because, again, without the support and love, um, we wouldn't be able to grow and expand. So I'm definitely grateful to be here and be bringing you guys um all these incredible, extraordinary uh, things. Uh, It's just an extraordinary for me to be able to sit here um, and and participate in such uh, amazing uh, opportunities and interviews. And like I said, to be able to bring it, um, to bring it together with everything else that I've been doing, I just feel I'm in the right place at the right time. And it's just amazing. So I really appreciate you guys for tuning in um, and just supporting everything I do, whether it's here uh, on Wednesdays on the Chicago Bridge Magazine doing this podcast uh, for Black History Every Day, or if it's um, the Euphoria Hour, which will be coming back June the 7th. I'm really, really excited about that. Um, So it's going to be amazing. So I'm getting ready, guys, to bring on our amazing guest. Um, You guys, I, again, am really, really excited for this. Um, The multi-talented son of multi-legend David Ruffin from The Temptation, um, elevating the Ruffin name in the entertainment world, creating his own legacy um, crafted by his unique vocal identity, sharing his story, telling you something uh, I bet you don't know, and showcasing his hot new music. So without further ado, you guys, uh, the incredible, extraordinary David Ruffin Jr., Hello. Hello. Good afternoon. How are you? 
I'm doing well. How are you? Thank you so much for joining me this Wednesday. It is an absolute honor and pleasure to be uh, be here on this on this uh, podcast interview with you with a legend with you, as, as such as yourself. Well, I'm not the I'm not, I'm just the I'm just what precedes the legend, and um, uh, I'm um, my father is uh, the one. I'm just lucky to be a part of the bloodline and uh, a part of the journey and the voyage. Absolutely, very humble in saying that. Definitely, because you've definitely uh, made your own moves in creating your own path in, in the industry and the things that you've been doing. Um, so again, you know, just to kind of give people a little bit of background, you know, of course your father, um, David Ruffin, he was part of the temptation. So, you know, music is in your background, but what made you um, just say, you know, even though that's what my dad, this is for me as well. What kind of uh, made it significant for you that that's kind of where you wanted to go with your life? What, what what was a significant thing in my life that led me to follow in his footsteps? Well, to get into making music, creating, and such as you do, because you have singles yourself. You got some hits under your belt. So what, you know, took you on that journey? You know, even though that, that musical background was in your family, you could have taken a different path and, you know, did a whole bunch of different things. So what really made it like, you know, this is for me, regardless of what the what runs in my blood. This is what's in my heart. Well, you said, um, what was it for me? Uh, <clears throat> it was uh, initially music wasn't for me. I didn't necessarily like or find appreciation in uh, the life style that my father and some of his friends and brothers were le leading. I didn't necessarily see that for me. Um, I was an athlete. Uh, I was okay. a track, uh, a swim, track, football, not star, but aspiring to be. Um, I wanted to play pro football. Nice. And I think what started me in a different path was I also wanted to be a race car driver, but oh wow, <laughs> that's just a tidbit of information that I've almost forgotten about. That was um, my first, no, my second. Um, that was my first or second love. Of like, oh, I want to be that when I grow up. It was race car mm. driver, um, and oddly enough, I wanted to be a police officer, um, but. Um, what got me more into music, I guess the first thing, so I was already writing poetry was my, was my artistic, uh, outlet was poetry. Mm, nice. Um, but I would have to say it was, uh, I used to go to a lot of house parties in Detroit. Detroit was a okay. house, house music capital, uh, Chicago and Detroit. Um, yes, a lot of people. I'm a house baby. I, I learned, but I'm a house baby. Yeah, I'm a house baby. A lot of people don't know about the house music, yeah. but uh, yes, yes, it's, it's definitely a, a whole thing. That's what you really turned up. New songs be all all night long. Y'all be out there all night. Yes, sir. Right, right. take it to the bridge. Uh, um, <laughs> um, but it was uh, house music, and then I had the opportunity and was friends with a lot of DJs. Um, and some of those DJs, you know, gave me opportunity to learn. Um, Kevin Tate uh, was a DJ who gave me opportunity to learn. Um, uh, who else? Mike, was it Mike Clark? Another DJ, uh, Alan Esther. Uh, there were quite a few DJs in Detroit that, you know, I was friends with and I've seen, you know, I see them often on tables and I grew an attraction for it. And um, before I could get myself some turntables, I started making what was called cassette tape mixes. And I was really good at it, really good at it. And so um, 
I got some turntables and I started spinning. And then the next route from there was this was a lot of instrumentals. I kind of like trying to put some of my poetry to music, and it usually came out as a rap. Mm. So then my uh, my rap life, uh, writing raps, led me to the singing part. But the reason that it led me to the singing part wasn't because, well, in my eyes, wasn't because I wasn't good. It was because mm. my father said, I would rather you not do that, and I would rather... Uh, not support that. Yeah. And if and when you decide to sing, I'll back you up. So yeah. it took about a year. It took about a year and I had changed a lot of my rap songs and even po poetry to hip hop beats to I changed them, took some words out, changed the cadence, made them R and B songs. And a year later I played them for my dad over the phone and he was excited and I was excited that he was excited. And right. so that was probably yeah, the whole story about how it all started and basically, you know, not necessarily the end of it, but I don't know what transition there is from music other than some of the other uh, entertainment extensions and, and media that I've attempted to be involved in. But if there's something next after music, maybe a uh, NFT or a NFT, I don't know. I'm on that. I'm on that bandwagon too, when it comes, but for now that's the whole story about what brought me into music and where I'm, you know, where I'm at now. Mm, absolutely. I like how, like you said, just kind of, you know, you had your own kind of, of jerk, you know, ideas of what you wanted to do, but here you are. And, and you know, I, I, for me, I think it's kind of hard to, um, I find I do poetry as well. And so finding to put it to a B and, you know, the cadence and the melody, it's just, it's also new. So I, I definitely commend you for being able to take those and switch it up and, and turn it from from something a different delivery and style and, and, and switch it because that that's definitely a whole challenge in itself. <laughs> oh, well. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, like you said, uh, you know, now, you know, you you found yourself doing a lot of things and working with a lot of people, um, such as people from Death Row, uh, uh, with Snoop Dogg. Um, you've just been able to, you know, run into a lot of people. So what have those experiences have been like uh, to be able to to meet those guys and be able to work with those people? Well, when I met Snoop, he and I were both on the way up. But uh, so, I mean, it was really, you know, I mean, he had already had one real good hit, but he was still learning his way. And I was, too. Um, but Dre, having met Dre, you know, um, that was kind of a, you know, I was a fan. I was a fan <laughs> of N.W.A. My yeah. mom got that CD. She don't play, boy. She got it right. She got one of the only copies probably in the world of that NWA CD. <laughs> right. Um, but, uh, I mean, I have had, uh, I've had an, uh, an affection for, I've had an affection for hip hop from the onset. You know, so, um, I've been able to be that and you know like okay look off topic young men just like young ladies try to be like their moms I try to be like my father I was my father's only son so I also felt some responsibility in that any opportunity that I could in music to get his attention or to get him to approve on what I was doing I was gonna do mm, I know um, that's right. not only because he had made a lot of mistakes in his own career but I knew in spite of whatever history or whatever background we had that he wanted me to succeed, mm -hmm. you know? So just like any young man wants, you know, 
to bring his best to the table. So, you know, I am, it's both a curse and a blessing to be the only son of David Ruffin because the expectation I can't share with mm -hmm. any of my siblings. If my sisters were taking the path of entertainment, even writing music, I could share some of that burden. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, and, you know, it's all more uh, uh, a blessing to be able to, to be trying to, uh, you know, uh, make waves in the and in, in, in keep the water wavy that in the waves that my father created in music, not only in music history, I mean in American history and music history, and both combined. I mean it's it's a big um, responsibility, but there's nobody else on the planet, on this entire planet, that can do that. So imagine as as much of a blessing as it is. Imagine, you know, what it's like. And a lot of juniors out here in the world, regardless of how in the public eye their father's success is uh, or their failure is, a lot of juniors will totally identify with that. Um, mm -hmm. um, I think as parents, we may not recognize, uh, it might be, I don't know, the expectation to, to put on our kids I don't know if that's narcissistic or just hopeful expectation, but I think, you know, in, in, in hindsight, it's a big deal to put that junior on someone uh, before you know they can even surpass or equate to your level of society's su success, measure of success. So, I mean, you know, I did change the subject up, but I think it's important, especially to the male listeners um, who I... Uh, you know, I do have some of, you know, I just seem to have a larger female audience, which is no problem with me. Right. That's because you sing it to the ladies. That's why. Right. Well, I'm also singing <laughs> for the men. Though. I'm also <laughs> singing for the men as well. But I think it's important as I get older, especially to, you know, share as much knowledge as I can and to try right. to keep my blades as sharp as possible in order to help sharpen iron of, of those uh, who also require or need or seek it. <clears throat> so Absolutely. I know I missed probably answering your question initially the way you wanted mm -hmm. to, but it affected me in a way that it brought up some other topics. And I apologize. No, but if you I, want no, to I appreciate that. you saying that. No, I don't even, but I appreciate you saying that because you don't realize um, what that kind of a, a, a label will, will do. You don't as a, as a parent, you know, you just think I want to make sure that there's a good name or, you know, you want to make sure that you're, pass it down some kind of a legacy and that's what I think it is for a lot of people the name is like a legacy or you know something that you can really you know leave something special for your child and like you said you don't really understand um, the kind of pressure so I, I appreciate you bringing up that kind of a point because you know being a mom and right now you know expecting our you know deciding names you know and, and so I think that that's a, a good point I'm really glad that my um, middle child uh, wound up with uh, well, yeah, my two of my children are by the same mother. So, but my middle child, um, his mom was, you know, I made it clear that he would be David Ruffin the third. But she had her own ideas and did something else, and I'm glad because um, had I had I thought about it. You know, in the moment, I'd have been upset, but I did. I did very shortly thereafter understand, and then even more so, I'm glad that she took that upon herself. I know she didn't do it for the reasons of why I would have wanted her to, which is the burden that it could put on him to produce a life mm -hmm. that is expected of him by society and not by himself. And I wouldn't have wanted that for him. So I'm really glad he's able to do his own thing and follow his own path and create his own right. journey. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And now I got um, something else that because you are you are a very, very busy man. You have a lot of a lot of things that you do. But um, in March, you were featured on Fox Prime Times primetime show I can see your voice so what is that experience like 
due to COVID, it was very strange. You know, on the TV show, you see these audience members and stuff. And to be honest, not to put, uh, I can see your voice on blast because it's super creative. They did a great job. I will almost, you know, they did their best to try to give me the ambiance and the energy of a full crowd. But right. that didn't happen. However, uh, initially when I left, I mean, my experience was kind of weird. You know, uh, it was really kind of weird. One of the handlers wasn't so handling me very well. And I, it wasn't even in, in a... Uh, VIP kind of way, I noticed that this particular handler wasn't handling just me incorrectly, but um, I found it to be a little a slight bit unbearable seeing it as it was wasn't just me. Had it been just me, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have made an, an issue about it. I had a micro Karen moment, but things got better in regards to that. But the production was weird. The timing was weird. How long I was on stage standing in one place was weird. Uh, reacting to a crowd that wasn't there was weird. But when the production was done and I finally saw it, I was extremely pleased and honored to be a part of it. Um, uh, most of the people that I encountered, more so the talent, mm. uh, because I met, I didn't really meet, but you know, you weren't able to talk to too many people outside of your group, your production group. Um, mm. But whenever, you know, with us artists, there was, um, you know, people who didn't know who I was. It was just a general camaraderie, you know. Um, most people didn't know who I was because we weren't talking in, into any uh, degree about who we were with other uh, voices on the show. Uh, right, right. We were referring to each other as the dancer and the opera guy and the car salesman. Um, so, but... but Doing the show uh, turned out to be really awesome. I'm glad, honestly, weird, weird, really weird, especially after talking to the guy that did win, which was the softball coach. Um, so we got paid. Every voice gets paid to be on the show. And if you are the last voice on that episode, you get an additional five grand. So I was, I was initially salty that I didn't make it to the end. I made it right before the end. But after I saw the show and I saw the fact that I got to perform my live performance song that I had rehearsed and practiced, as opposed to if you are the last voice on the show, you do a duet with one of the judges, celebrity judges on the show. And in most cases, these are songs that are safe for the talent, for the, for the celebrity, not for the voice talent. Mm -hmm. So... <clears throat> Inevitably, as he even explained, and I could see on television, he didn't get to showcase himself as an actual qualified singer. He had to kind of give, he had had to deal with what they gave him so that he wouldn't outshine, which turned out to be Candy Burris on stage. And then that particular day, I don't think she was at her best and or at that particular time in her life because the song for the uh the song for the finale which was with the celebrity came like wow quick i mean really late like two weeks before the show was about to take you have to hurry up and learn this mm -hmm. song so i mean it, i was glad i got to show my live performance hold on mm -hmm. because i wouldn't have got to sing that if i won i got to sing that other song that he sang with with, with her and so i was really happy about it um, the, the, the first performance, a lot of people think that that was me live singing, but it wasn't, it was me singing. Right. But it was me. Mm. It was me lip syncing a recording of myself. Mm. The last performance where I was eliminated, I was singing live. So I was really mm. happy to be able to do that. Actually, I would have been sad if I didn't. Because that was a better performance. My girl wasn't a genuine performance because I was so thinking about what I had sang mm. and what moves I might make that, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of comfort and freestyle on that part. After standing there for two hours in one place and then going up there and doing that and standing back in one place again for two hours and then doing that again the next day. 
You must like, have had some Dr. Shows. I know you had to soak your fears of Epsom salt. Well, and they had me, you know, you in, the, in, in, in in wardrobe. So I had on the shoes that they wanted me to have on. So between those times, I was not doing that. I'm taking these shoes off. Right. And they were like, uh, you know, you got to put your shoes back on because you are constantly on film. And I was like, wow. OK, so um, there was a time that they allowed me to. I was like, listen, these, these are not broken into my feet. These are not very comfortable. I don't know who else is on this stage having to wear some dress shoes, but I'm up here in a suit and I'm not going to wear no sneakers. Mm. Although being a car salesman, I can kind of kind of would have made sense. But I'm I'm selling, you know, I'm I'm, I'm looking like I'm selling upscale vehicles. I'm not looking like I'm the dude selling you a, a, a tractor and a pacer behind the Chevy dealership that mm -hmm. closed down five years ago. Anyway, I, um, I was really happy about the performance. I was really about <laughs> happy about the production. Uh, I made some cool little relationships in the in uh, in the process, and um, you know. Um, got that bug or that insecurity uh, about, you know, being on TV at any extent or under any micro microscope out of my system. And I'm cool with what I've seen. Even some of the feedback that people have that's not necessarily in my favor is not something that I, I mean, I've been in this business a long time and I'm in the acting world too. You can hear a whole lot of no's before you hear a whole lot of yeses. So, mm, and you don't right. get to hear a whole lot of yeses in until you get closer to making it. Hence, I'm saying yes to everything all year. Um, mm. Not everything will be gratis, but I'm saying yes to almost everything all year because uh, there's a lot going on in my life as of lately, not only before the show, but because uh, it's given me a little momentum. So for that, Fox Network, and I can see your voice. I appreciate you. Amen to that. Amen to that. Now, move. I want to get into your two songs. You got two of your recent songs, "Cry, Cry" and "Time of My Life." Um, how how did those come about? I know you said you write poetry and all these different things, but what really inspired these two songs for you? Um, uh, love. Whether whether it's uh whether it's the uh, sad part of love or if it's the glorious part of love. Um, love is based behind everything. Even if I'm doing some some sort of music that is not palatable to others. Um, cry, Cry, Cry came from a personal experience. Uh, I was married once and it came from that. Uh, uh, unfortunately, um, that marriage... I got fortunate. Um, we were married, I would say, 15 months, but I was able to get it annulled. I promised myself I wouldn't do, uh, it was the only one thing I could ever do in life that I hadn't already done, which was get married. And I said, I'd only do it once. And I got married and it didn't work out. And it, 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 in the process, I had some heartbreak and cry, cry, cry. Um, you know, if you listen to it, Clearly, if you listen to it, you know, it's it, it feels very tangible and it's going to be a, a common thought or a common feeling that may have not necessarily been emoted in an audible way for its listeners. And it's kind of poetic and it's not um, it's not going to make you ball, ball out and cry, but it is right. going to give you an idea that. You're not alone in that in that in that energy or that light or that darkness for that matter. But I definitely got that. I got that that sense from that. You know, I, going through. I I tried it again. I'm going through it a second time. But you know, again, it's just one of those things that you know just happens in life. You know, I'm just I'm not no fool though. I would do it again. I'm meant to be somebody's wife. It just wasn't his, but that's okay. We still out here. Boo out here but I, I definitely would you know was able to listen to that and kind of just kind of sit and just kind of you know get that that feeling that you're talking about um but i was going to say um yeah and in regards to time of my life heartbreak doesn't have uh anything to do with it in this one it's just about love it's just about um appreciating the small things it's really right. pretty simplistic um It's about love, though. I mean, and it's pretty obvious. It's simplistic. It's about um, 
I I consider it a wedding song. I'll put it like that. Mm. I consider it a wedding song. It wasn't necessarily designed that way, but time of my life, being married, sounds pretty synonymous to me. Mm. Definitely. So what? Listen what? It. Just listen to it. If that's easy, I really want you. I really want the listeners. Time of my life is a really happy song about uh, how uh, a man is at his best and happiest with her. And it's okay to admit that. It's okay to admit that. It's okay that you fellas are happy with that one. It's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to admit that because if you don't put it out there, the universe might not hear it. Ah. So I, I, I do have to wrap the show up, but I want everybody to know what's what's next for you. Uh, more music. Uh, what, what's what's next for you? What can we expect from your your greatness? What's next for me? Uh, drop another single here soon. Um, debut the uh, video for Time of My Life here soon. Yay. Uh, probably debut that through Vivo um, and Midtown Radio. I am also looking to complete uh, another single and video release before summer. Nice. I want to drop a full LP for the first time. I've dropped a couple EPs and I've dropped some singles, but I want to drop a whole LP um, by the first quarter of next year uh, and as soon as my birthday, July this year. Uh, depending on how many things I can get in line and how m much better I can make the music as it is. So oh, I've been making music for a minute. And during COVID, I made more music than I made in a long time. So now I almost have a double album. So it could be even a double album. If oh, not, nice. if not, um, there'll be a whole slew of singles popping off this year, nice. uh, followed by instead of perhaps an LP, uh, maybe an EP, depending on the feedback, depending on the demand. If the demand says, no, we want an, e we want an LP by uh, first quarter, January of next year, then that's what that's what they'll get. That would be a nice birthday gift. My birthday is January 18th, so that would be a Cuba, nice little birthday. Well, you know yes, what you got? Birthday. You know what you got for your birthday this year on January 18th? You got the release of Time of My Life. That's when it was released because you – and David Ruffin share the same birthday. Yes. Me and my mom, we did some research. We we see we watched the movie one night, so we did some research. So we were, you know, seeing about that. And it was at the, around the time of with Betty White. And so me and you know your father and Betty White, we were all connected, you know, by my birthday. And now here I am, all these months later, interviewing you. So she nearly fell out this morning when I told her I'd be talking to you today. So uh, you know, like you said, my birthday is a very special. I'm just a Line with the stars, baby. That's it. Yeah, you're, right. <laughs> you're right. You're absolutely right. It's a no-brainer. Um, plan to see. Yeah. Um, um, and yeah, I'm gonna use that that date again as my absolute deadline. But any and then anything can happen and everything can happen actually, even before that, and change the whole scope of what happens January 18th of next year. What else is going on is I'm uh, currently we uh Sons of Motown. We are offspring, male offspring of uh, a temptation, and we had our first show here in March of uh, 26 here in Los in Los Angeles, and um, I'm also uh, in talks and well past its infant stages of a full documentary with the Sons of Motown. I also mm -hmm. am doing appearances and shows with the Sons. Uh, oh well, let me explain to you who the Sons of Motown are first. Sons of Motown are Glenn Leonard Jr. Melvin Franklin Jr., C.J. Jefferson, who is Dennis Edwards' godson, and myself. <clears throat> There's a second group that I'm doing events with, which is the Sons of Soul Legends, which is Solomon Burke's son, Gemini, son, the Gemini uh, Burke, uh, Joe Tex II, uh, speaks for itself, uh, Joe Hooker Taylor, Johnny Taylor's son, uh, uh, Bobby Brooks, um, uh, uh, which is uh, um, why am I drawing a blank right now? Um, 
because it's so much greatness on the line. Oh, huh? uh, yeah, that, I'm also I'm also I'm also forgetting someone. Um uh uh uh, uh anywho, Sons of Soul Legends. I'm also um in a movie. I'm playing the attorney in a movie. I've been wanting to get into acting, so I'm looking for any roles. Um uh, preferred speaking, but um uh, I can play a plethora of different characters. I've got accents here and there. Um, but I'm playing a role in the Brenda Harris story, the young black lady who unfortunately um, was um, emotionally and sexually abused throughout her life and un- found herself in a situation where she uh, dismembered her father, who was the perpetrator, and um, she tossed his stuff into the ocean and never to be seen again. And Due to complications of this particular event, he lost his life. She was mm-hmm. facing a lot of time, uh, but fortunately, she is to this on this current day um, in full re- in in recovery. Probably never fully re- recovered from that, but yeah. fully in the motion and the uh, uh, avenue of recovery. A uh, good support group and um, a production team of people and actors like myself willing to share her story so that others can um, make note and bring light to give a little bit more freedom and um, security to those people who might be dealing with the same and keeping it to themselves or and or have kept it to themselves, whether it's happened to them indirectly or directly. Um, I'm also uh, I'm also in the process of uh, getting my head around writing a book. And hold on one second. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't I, get that trash. I apologize for that. And um, I'm also in the process of writing a book. As of uh, 2014, I was I had a production I was putting together, which is days away from being signed. Uh, to either uh, Oprah's Network or uh, TBS or uh, Discovery, uh, a show called Real Bloodlines. As of the past two weeks on, and uh, most recently this morning, I had a conference call. Uh, I won't tell too much. I will give some light to the energy that made this possible. Uh, Real Bloodlines is about offspring of American icons what they may be doing in that same line, what they may not be doing in that same line, same, same line or career path, how successful they are or have not been their ups and their downs stories about what they've been through, whether they've been recognized or not recognized. Um, This show is actually getting some footage. Once again, it's been some years, but I'm really excited about uh, the, the cast of people i'll I'll quickly mention what i do have confirmed i have a whole line of others but richard pryor jr is involved mickey howard is involved um bing crosby's grandson phil crosby is involved Um, Mm. there's a a, a long list of some heavy hitter people who are going to be involved in the show real bloodlines and thanks to moku tv we are uh, embarking on a new experience in this production and hope to be bringing this uh to the to the consumers and to the public um, later this year or early next year. And that is something super, super amazing. And I'm excited about um, not only having being the original creator, but seeing all the people who have come along and been involved. Um, let me step inside for a second. Yes. So it's a truck uh-huh. that bother us. Um, um, as well as uh, I'm putting together an opportunity and or uh, an experience on online experience of basically a concert. Uh, just this past week, had my first show in five years that I did on my own. I've been in a lot of shows with uh, my fellow uh, entertainers and musicians um, as part of some group production, but I just had my first show and I don't remember how long. Um, I've done four shows this year. This was the first one I did with my own songs for my own performance. And it, it felt so good and went so well that I'm booking it again 20, uh, 25th of June in Los Angeles 
in Los Angeles downtown, uh, 900 North Broadway, the Songbird Cafe. Mm-hmm. Um, and after that, we're already in talks with booking some other uh, local venues. And when I've gotten myself and the band, everybody way up to speed, I'm going to do uh, a benefit concert. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. my plan uh, for now. I have a lot more things on the table, but I don't want to jinx them nor oversaturate no. the listeners. Let's maybe save a little something for the updates or, or maybe we could do a part Yay. two. Or maybe I would love do- that. <laughs> and you got to have to have the link so that way we'll be able when the videos do drop, I would love to be able to share them with the listeners here. That would be absolutely amazing. Of course. Of course. So I mean, are there socials that uh, get email them over uh, while we get all the contact and we will make sure that when you're ready, that we can uh, drop them exclusively here on the Chicago Bridge. Okay. Okay. I'm with that. And let everybody Chicago know bridge. your socials. Chicago, Chicago bridge. Huh. Yeah, hey, that's right. Uh, I want to know. I want to let everybody know. How can we follow you? What are your socials? Um, how are we able to keep up with your super, progress? Super, super duper easy. It's David Ruffin Jr. No spaces. Pretty much everywhere. Okay. You guys heard that right here. Y'all can follow him any and everywhere. David Ruffin Jr. I really, really. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Also really important uh, it's in its its baby stages but it's really looking good enough to share david ruffin jr.com go on the, over there and learn a few things and if you uh scroll down the page a little learn a little bit something about uh the other ways or one of my other um, passions and um while you're there there's a couple links to listen to some music that's already been uh released and uh as well as my most recent releases as well as uh, a link to buy those as opposed to stream them because it's just a little bit more support that us artists can appreciate when it's direct. Thank you. I understand that. I understand that. Like I said, you guys heard it live here. It was my absolute honor, King, to spend this time with you. I appreciate you and everything that you have accomplished. And I appreciate, again, like you said, uh, you know, just sharing those those, uh, pieces of gems with us. Again, I'm in the stages of naming my baby. And I I appreciate you sharing that because you don't um, you don't think about the pressure when you're naming your kid. You really don't. So I needed that in this moment um, that I'm going through. And just again, just sharing all the incredible things you have going on everybody uh just just saying in the comments they can't wait for the music um they are so excited uh they are saying the sons of soul legend sons of motown they are all for it so we cannot wait did you know did you know let me ask you this how many here this is for your listeners and maybe somehow they can comment to you how many of you listeners knew that I'm the voice behind Gin and Juice. I'm also the pen behind it. But more importantly, a lot of people have heard me out here in the world before and just didn't know it. I'm all over that album. The Shiznit too. Da 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 Anywho, I just wanted to see how many people knew that. Go ahead and comment back. I'm gonna and, definitely drop that as a, a a trivia on this. We'll reshare everything and see if somebody put it in there. Because I'm gonna be honest, I did not know. And then when I did a little okay. bit, I was like, okay, so it is definitely you never know um who does what, okay, and uh who is really involved in these jams that we all turn it up to. So I know everybody definitely appreciate you uh, for being a part of that right there. <laughs> well, I mean, it's nice to be a part already, honestly. Although, you know, it's a long road to, to getting any accolades for it, or monetarily or publicly. It's nice to know inside as the son of somebody who was so impactful in music history, to have left a mark that is also 
so important. You know, this number eight all time hits on VH1 forever. Uh, mm. I'm proud of that. And that's, right. that's not I didn't get paid by VH1 or Snoop Dogg or anybody to say that. I'm proud of that. I'm proud to be a part of that. It gives me a lot of uh, satisfaction and it actually leaves me not to be so hard on myself. You know, you know what I mean? Like I actually did do something that was worth something. And even though I strive for more and I want to accomplish more. Uh, if I unfortunately had to pass tomorrow. I won't think I don't think I would have left my children unproud mm. that's all i can hope for i know that's right and i know i said i gotta let you go but i just got this one last thing i try to ask everybody you know because like you said we all go through things there's hard days so what kind of motivational tip can you give somebody that might be entrepreneur artist whatever it is and they're just like man i don't know if i could keep going i'm having i'm going through a rough patch i don't know if i could continue to to pursue this dream how do you encourage somebody and lift somebody up um, through that if it's something that they've been going through for more than 10 years i'm gonna just be this voice that's already in them shake that shit off mm. you already know what it is um you're going to as you always have take the time that you need to recover get back up off your knees and keep going mm. If you have only been doing it five years or so and you're finding yourself frustrated or anything under five years, I'm going to say this. It's okay to take a breath. It's okay to back away from that and visit something that you're familiar with or brings you satisfaction or gives you some sort of confidence that you know you're on the right path of success. If something that you're doing is holding you up or stifling your growth, hmm, maybe you don't have to necessarily revisit something. Maybe you could research or investigate parallels to what you've tried to do, even if you're not doing it from a capacity of I'm trying to learn something new, you may accidentally learn something that applies to what you've been trying to do for the past three, four or five years. That's my advice. I'm sticking to it. Mm. Let nothing stop you is all I can tell the people, baby. And again, I thank you, King, for your time this week. Well, Wednesday. of course, that part. Right. I said, okay. it's okay to take a break. Don't ever give up on your dreams. Don't ever give up on yourself. And I know it sounds so common and it sounds so mundane and it sounds so broken record, but it's really true. Because at the end of the day, even if you give up on yourself and you settle, when you can't do what you settled to do anymore because of physical limitations or mental limitations, you're going to be forced to deal with all of that stuff that you gave away that you didn't stick to. So don't do it to yourself. Don't ever quit. If you got to do another job or two other jobs for the rest of your life and feel like, man, I'm not where I want to be. Just keep going. You'll make it. And if you don't try to leave something behind to get the next person in line past that hump that you never made it past, but don't ever quit that part you should preach that as should i maybe i forgot to mention that part i just wanted to say it's okay to take a break but That's the people right. who know better are never going to stop i never stop every day i say i'm not there's a day in the week where i look at my planner there's a day in the week where i'll look at my planner right and there'll be nothing there and i'll be like ah, i'm not gonna do nothing that never happened so i'm just saying you know, the people who know better, they're not going to stop no matter what you say, what I say, what they say in the moment. Some That's of the people right. who are running into those walls, okay, stop hurting yourself because you may not have developed the skin to keep running into those walls and knowing that it's going to be okay. Go ahead and take a break. Do something else for a second, but never give up on your dream. Absolutely. And just hold your camera down just a little bit so everybody can see you and say bye to you. Uh, Cause I I gotta end the show now. But again, thank you so much, King. You guys, David Ruffin Jr. Like he said, you guys can follow him on all social platforms. David Ruffin Jr. Also check out davidruffinjr.com and make sure that you guys go and purchase the music uh, because it it shows a lot more love. We can't wait to see your upcoming things. And again, we're going to definitely link because I got to be one of the first to play this video, baby. I like dropping the exclusives. 
Yes, ma'am. I'll keep you posted. I appreciate it, Key. You enjoy. Stay safe. Have an incredible Memorial Day weekend. Peace and blessings to you and yours. Thank you, Queen. We'll see each other soon. Definitely. Bye-bye. You guys, David Ruffin Jr., I, I, an iconic interview, you guys. Iconic right now. I just want to again thank him so much for his time. I want to thank everybody that was tuned in. We have so many people on right now. Uh, Ashley, Arthur, Young Pastor, uh, Brandy, Nicky, uh, Brian, Calvin, uh, Ash, everybody, Yolan, uh, Taji, Taji, I, I am blessed. I hope I said that right. Um, Divine Tawana, um, everybody, thank you so much, you guys, for tuning in. Make sure you guys share, like again. Shout out to our sponsors, the real pretty plug, ENT Industry News. And you guys, if you need publication, go to the Chicago Bridge Magazine.com. Make sure you guys also follow us, okay? The Chicago Bridge Magazine. Make sure that you guys follow me, okay? The one and only Gracie Love on all social platforms Facebook, the Euphoria Hour, and on Instagram, the underscore Euphoria underscore hour I have a whole bunch of list of events especially this Sunday coming up so you don't want to miss out on that and also make sure you guys are following at the real pretty plug they have this fashion show coming up vendors need to make sure that you register you don't want to miss out on this event so again thank you so much to our sponsors the real pretty plug ENT industry thank you so much to the bridge magazine Miss Brigitte Wiley for having me a part of such an a Incredible, extraordinary, iconic interview with more and more to come. You guys don't want to miss out. Friday at noon, I'll be back here doing the same thing with an amazing group of talented actors. So you don't want to miss out on that. Again, thank you so much, Mr. David Ruffin Jr. Thank you so much to the Chicago Bridge, Miss Brigitte Wiley, our sponsors. Thank you so much to everybody that tuned in. And thank you, thank you. Thank you uh, just to everyone, our, our supporters, like I said. Um, and make sure you guys also want to register at theprettyplug.com for this fashion show. Okay, You don't want to miss out. It's going to be a great networking opportunity. It's going to be an amazing, amazing event. Very, very dope. So go to therealprettyplug.com. Register. Get all the information that's coming really, really soon. And you guys don't want to miss out on that. And yeah, come hang out with me May 29th. Uh, follow me, The Euphoria Hour on Facebook, The underscore Euphoria Hour underscore um, on Instagram so you guys can get the location. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. You guys enjoy the rest of your Wednesday, your week, and have a safe Memorial's Day weekend. Peace and blessing. I am the one and only Gracie Love. Real Pretty Plug Fashion Show is a promotional event to showcase your talent and to help gain clientele and exposure. Our goal is to highlight like-minded entrepreneurs and give them the proper recognition that they deserve. This is a free promotional event for businesses. There is no vendor fee and it is not a free event. Our participants will be compensated through gifts and free promo in our Pure Pretty Fashion Show directly in our More details will be explained further in your welcoming package once you are signed up and accepted to be a part of the fashion show. Please consider that positions are limited. This event will be documented by media outlets such as the Roku Channel, the Chicago Bridge Magazine, the Call Fraternity, by Hope Radio, and Apple Podcasts. Thank you so much for your interest. We look forward to teaming with you.